Good morning and welcome to another Friday and I thought today I'd give you a little bit of Christmas cheer with these lovely decorations. Keep you smiling. It's been a good week hasn't it? Uh, we're out of lockdown now uh, although we're back into other restrictions but it does seem that the news on the vaccine is looking very promising indeed and let's hope that it won't be too long before we get back to some sort of semblance of normality. But it's great that this weekend we are able to get back to choir practice tonight and uh, this Sunday we're going to have our Advent carol service. So that should be a lot of fun and very much looking forward to that. But I hope you've had a good week too and achieved all the things you've wanted to achieve. So how did you get on with uh, Quickfire 5 last week? Now before I give you the answers to the last week, I should say from the week before, when I was asking you about cathedrals with spires, um, it was pointed out to me that Chelmsford Cathedral has a sort of spire too. It's got a little sort of green pointy bit on the top. So if you would put Chelmsford on your list, I apologise. And that made, I think, 11 cathedrals. Anyway, let's shoot through last week's uh, questions. So the first one was, what was the full name of Parry, the composer? Well, he was a baronet, and as I said, it was a bit posh. Sir Charles Hubert Hastings Parry. Charles Hubert Hastings. Imagine being saddled with that name. How many bark did, how many bark, how many children did J.S. Bark have? Well, he's reputed to have had about 20. I'm not sure. Uh, anyone knows exactly how many, but 20 is the commonly quoted figure. Number three, in which city was Stanford born? And the answer is Dublin. He was an Irishman. Question four, which I said could be open to a bit of dis interpretation. What's the difference between an anthem and a motet? We could go on forever about this, but in very simple terms, keeping it very simple, I would say that an anthem is a piece written for the office of matins or evensong and to follow the third collect in choirs and places where they sing and would be a piece sung in English. A motet tended to be an earlier piece sung in Latin and performed during the mass. But these days it's very interchangeable. So all you clever boffins don't argue with me because it is very difficult to say, but it's just thought-provoking. Final question was, uh, Queen Elizabeth I described this parish church as the fairest, goodliest and most famous parish church in England. Which church was she talking about? And of course the answer was St Mary Redcliffe in Bristol, a church close to my heart because that's where I started singing when I was six years old. And a little bit of trivia that I remember somebody telling me, I don't know whether it's true or not, but you know it has a spire. Somebody told me that if you floated St Mary Redcliffe down the River Avon, if you floated it under the Clifton Suspension Bridge, the top of the spire would just scratch the bottom of the bridge. Who knows? Is that true? I suppose it depends on high water or low water. But there we go. So, five more questions for this week to keep you amused. So don't uh, work too hard. I'm not promising any prizes, but it's just a bit of fun. So the first question is this, the choir master and organist at Magdalen College, Oxford has a very posh name. He's not called the director of music or the choir master. He's got a very posh name. Do you know what that is? Magdalen College, Oxford. Question number two. Do you remember I told you about this earlier on in the, in the summer? Which composer had a wooden leg and used to stick drawing pins in it during tutorials to surprise the first year students? Which composer had a wooden leg? Question number three. Can you name two famous boy trebles? Two young boys who have become very famous through recordings. Tricky one, that. Question number four. Mrs. C.F. Alexander, Cecil Francis Alexander, was a very well-known Irish Anglo uh, hymn writer. Can you name two of her famous hymns? Mrs. Alexander, two of her famous hymns. And the final question is about that very famous piece, Miserere by Allegri. Can you tell me who, as a 14-year-old, was reputed to have heard the piece and written it down by memory? Went to the Sistine Chapel and heard it and wrote it down by memory. Who was that? 
There's your five questions. See how you get on for this week. So, as always, our online services are available www.swanageteam.com. Um, but this week you're able to come to the real thing as well, 10.30 at St Mary's and 6.30 Advent Carol service afterwards. So for my recommendation for a uh, piece this week, again, I'm going to go for an Advent piece. And there are so many wonderful Advent carols that I could uh, point you to. But I'm, I'm going again with a sort of slightly more large scale work, something which uh, I love. It doesn't get performed too often in parish churches these days. It's a bit more of a cathedral anthem. But the piece is The Wilderness by Samuel Sebastian Wesley. We've talked about him and the Blessed Be the God and Father and some of his other pieces. But The Wilderness is an extraordinary piece. Um, I've attached to my email the text, Old Testament text. Um, and it's a, it's a fascinating, it's about 14 minutes long, this piece. So, you know, sit down, make yourself a cup of coffee and listen carefully. I'm pointing you to a recording by New College Oxford, so you can really hear it all. So Wesley wrote this as a fairly young man. His first cathedral appointment, he left London and he went to Hereford. And he soon realised, having got to Hereford, that it was a bit of a mistake. He was more cosmopolitan. But he went there. And as you remember, he wrote Blessed Be the Golden Father for Hereford as well. But when he first got there, the organ was being rebuilt um, and there wasn't a lot to do. There weren't many services going on. Um, and he was already making a name for himself as a composer, but he decided to write this wonderful sectional piece. Um, it sort of reflects the, uh, the earlier Restoration uh, verse anthems with accompaniment and in sections, but this is more developed and you can see the influence of theatre music with, with which he was very um, well acquainted. Um, influences even composers like Mozart. Um, it's very sectional. Uh, there's all sorts of bass uh, solo. There's an ATB little verse, a couple of big choruses, a couple of fugue sections, which aren't quite traditional, but so exciting. There's a wonderful bass solo in the middle with an with a extraordinary organ accompaniment. And that was one of the things that made this anthem a little bit more different from the earlier uh, verse anthems. Since in the old days, the verse anthems tended to be very simple accompaniments with a figured bass, um, sort of continuo parts. This was a fully fledged organ part. And as you'll hear in the bass solo, say to them that are of a fearful heart, be strong. The organ is amazing part there. But the whole piece is just brilliant, so exciting, so exuberant. The last and the ransom of the Lord. Uh, it's just such a wonderful, wonderful fugue. And then tacked on the end is this beautiful little semi-chorus at the very end. And sorrow and sighing shall flee away. So that's The Wilderness by S.S. Wesley. Just an amazing Advent piece. So I hope you enjoy that. So I'm going to leave the Christmas decks, I'm going to go downstairs to my room and we shall sing one or two warm-ups. See you in a minute. Right, are you ready then for a little bit of singing? So let's start off with our sliding up the fifths, just going... Good, really slide. Next one, and the next one, and the next one, two more, good. Now how about going down some scales, our Tony, Tony, Toe, going Tony, 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 like that, okay, three, four. Tony, 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 Tony. 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 One more. Tony, 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 Tony. All right. Good. 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 And now this one's specially for Lily Fawcett because she asked me why I didn't do it last week and it's her favourite. So you know what, which one this is, don't we? 
bit tricky there we are I'm looking out the window now and the Sun is coming out how wonderful anyway I hope you have a wonderful weekend and a good week ahead hopefully see a lot of you this evening and over the weekend but if not stay safe and I look forward to seeing you soon <laughs>